So indeed, for the International Archives Day this year, 2023, we have a, a kind of a theme, or should we say an emphasis that has been brought in. It's up on the screen as well. Adilekana or Adilekana Ativadagat Avanakapahangal Mukkeme Archives Matter. Yes, indeed, for researchers, those who want to check back what has happened in history, for them to dig up the old newspapers to find out who scored how much, and to be able to ascertain whether the historical accounts that are popular are not so accurate. Archives matter? No, that's not what it is at all. In fact, hopefully, by the end of our program, we will realize that archives matter today for tomorrow. And who's going to be responsible? Perhaps all of us. That's the emphasis that has been brought in with archives matter for everyone. If we need to know something tomorrow with regard to what has taken place in our province, in our area, I'm not talking of the geographical area, but that which concerns us, it has to be recorded. And the responsibility is not with the Department of Archives. It matters to all of us. So more on that as we move along in our very special program, a very special program, and you realize that you have a part to play individually. More on that later. But I'm now very happy to to bring on the first of our speakers for some introductory remarks and words of welcome. An alumna of the Colombo University and also the Leiden University in the Netherlands and the recipient of the Van Senegam Award in 2020 is Dr. Nadira Rupasinghe, the incumbent Director General, National Archives. So let's invite Nadira and you can all pay heed to what she says. Good afternoon. The Venerable Mahasangha, our Chief Guest, Honorable Minister of Bodhisattva and Religious and Cultural Affairs, Vidravi Kumanayaka, Honorable Minister of State for Arts, Culture, and Heritage in the Maldives, Mohammed Tariq, Her Excellency Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Sri Lanka and Maldives, Bonnie Hobar, Secretary of the Ministry of Bodhisattva and Religious and Cultural Affairs, Somarat Navidana Patirana, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of State for Arts, Culture and Heritage in the Maldives, Shamun Hamid. Our former Director General, National Archives, Dr. Saroja Singer, All additional secretaries and heads of department. All members of the National Archives Advisory Council. All other distinguished guests. I warmly welcome you all to our celebrations on International Archives Day, where we will talk about records, archives and memory. And there's no better tool than the Universal Declaration on Archives. Let me start from 121 years ago, in 1902, when our first government archivist, R.G. Anthonis, was appointed. Those are the beginnings of the National Archives as we know it today. This year, we are also celebrating another landmark that is 50 years since the enactment of the National Archives Law Number 48 of 1973. It's also the 75th anniversary of the International Council on Archives. We in Sri Lanka and the rest of the archiving world have gone a long way since 1902. You would realize also that our 125th anniversary is coming up. Today, as opposed to 1902, our traditional role as archivists are being severely challenged. If I were to unpack that somewhat, Laura Miller, consultant archivist, talks how back in 1977, the microcomputer, which is the modern day laptop, had a grand total of 10 megabytes of digital storage. Nowadays, you can send an email attachment of up to 10 megabytes. 10 petabytes is the digital space that the National Archives of Sri Lanka will have to establish in the next few years if we are to accrue born digital records 
and digitize extremely fragile archives. 10 petabytes is 10,000 million megabytes. So it has been estimated that people around the world generate 16 million text messages, 156 million emails, and 1 trillion photographs every day. These can all be destroyed within moments of creation, but they are all records, and who is saving it for the future? Because a record created today is a record of the future. And have you ever considered that perhaps its preservation is something that you must fight for? that this digital evidence is preserved, that the WhatsApp groups on which some government decision-making occurs is also a record and that it needs to be preserved, that we must all go on a march for evidence. Laura Miller advocates for such a march. It's a march to record the truth and a march to preserve the record. And when you preserve that record, it becomes an archive and it comes to us. But before that, way before it comes to us in most cases, the record has to be written. Public servants have a duty to record. For archives to be preserved, they first need to be created. If that decision is not minuted, if that report is not written, if the minutes of the meetings of the uh, cabinet of ministers are not written, our history is lost. Incidentally, I have been told confidentially that if the discussions of the meetings of the Cabinet of Ministers were written, the Cabinet meeting will span a whole week because uh, all ministers will want to have their opinion recorded. But instead, the minutes are written in that the decisions taken on each Cabinet memo are recorded. And these are transferred to the National Archives along with the memos and the annexes. So you have a duty to demand for the duty to record. In that way, you will be able to support the National Archives in preserving decisions, actions, and memories into the future. The Universal Declaration on Archives says that archives record decisions, actions, and memories. Public servants also have a duty not to destroy that record except with approval from Parliament as per the National Archives Law Number no. 48 of 1973. Without this fundamental demand for the duty to record, our history will not survive. The duty to record and the duty to archive are equally important. And I stress that the National Archives, while adhering to freedom of information legislation and personal data protection legislation, should be involved in this process from the journey from record to archive. But you may ask, why does it matter? Why do archives matter? It will matter when you want a copy of a deed from the 1850s to support your court case as evidence. It will matter when your child wants a copy of that deed that you signed this year, but only 50 years later, because the original got destroyed in the tsunami, yet another tsunami. It will also matter when you want to know more about Manuel Gay Don Juan, who was your ancestor from the 18th century. That information in Dutch is preserved in unique registers, which are called thombus and they're not found anywhere else in the world. And these are not just dusty old archives. You won't say that when we take a thombu from 250 years ago to court to provide evidence in your case, as we still do today. Thereby, it has a current value. And in a more historical sense, Archives will matter when you want to know more about why the ward you reside in is called both Slave Island and Compagnia Lidia, or was called, let me say, and the government wants to remove the word Slave Island. Did Kafir African slaves revolt on that island in 1723? In the archives here, in our main building over there, in the Dutch archives in particular, you would realize that R. L. Brohia's story, that there was a majority of Kafir slaves who revolted and killed the Dutch fiscal and his wife 
1723 is not supported by the evidence. In fact, the Dutch fiscal and his wife were killed by mostly Indonesian slaves, and the term Indonesian also has to be qualified, of course, and there is no mention of a revolt at all. But popular tourist guidebooks frequently refer to this story. So it was a majority of slaves originating from present-day Indonesia and South India who actually resided in the area. And way before 1723, when the fiscal and his wife were murdered, there were slaves residing in the island. Award-winning research by Professor Nira Vikram Singh, who used the Sri Lanka National Archives, has proven this. So how did we manage to blacken the slaves from Indonesia into coffee slaves? What does that tell us about our prejudices, and what does it tell us about us? In another example, Professor Gannath Obesekara, who has used uh, our archives in Kandy, our uh, branch in uh, Kandy has uh, very significant uh, collections also, he has shown that there is no evidence to prove that our last king, Sri Vikramaraja Singha, brutally traumatized, tortured Ahalapala Kumari Hami by forcing her to pound her murdered children. He shows that it was more likely to have been a British-led effort to portray the king in an unfavorable light. Sir Pauli Pires also has mentioned this. So what does this tell us about our propensity to believe in fake news or to be subjected to fake news? In all such historical sources, however old, what we see is that someone wrote down that decision, that report, that minute. That's why we can build narratives from 400 years ago. That's why we know what we know today about ourselves and what it means to be human. To use Professor Eric Ketela's words, he was a former national archivist in the Netherlands, archives are a time machine. They take you back in time to revisit your memories. And in all this, clearly, evidence matters. And I guarantee you that after the evidence is all gone, after the tsunami has turned back, you will come to us. And we have had experiences like this, but that's a conversation for another day. But to conclude, I ask you to support the National Archives in order to support your fundamental right to information and your memories. By protecting records and archives, help us to foster three pillars of a civilized society, as mentioned in our vision statement, the protection of identity, accountability, and memory through the protection of documentary heritage. To this end, I warmly welcome our Minister of Buddhist and Religious and Cultural Affairs, Vidra Vikramanayaka, and our Secretary, Mr. Somaratna Vidhanapathirana, to join us in this discussion today and into the future. The Universal Declaration on Archives is a document to be kept close to your hearts to guide you in your decision making on all matters concerning the National Archives. And I warmly welcome all of you to join in this afternoon about records, archives, and memory, and why archives matter. Thank you. <laughs>